happy Wednesday. Happy halfway through this week. I had to look at my phone real quick and make sure it was actually Wednesday because suddenly I couldn't remember. Remembered. Remember. All right. Let's go ahead. February 16th. Preparing the lamps. Hopefully there's not a lot of sanctuary shekels again this morning like yesterday. <laughs> All right. Preparing the lamps. Numbers 8, 1 through 4, 1445 or 1279 BC. The Lord said to Moses, give Aaron the following instructions. When you set up the seven lamps in the lampstand, place them so their light shines forward in front of the lampstand. So Aaron did this. He set up seven lamps so they reflected their light forward, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The entire lampstand, from its base to its decorative blossoms, was made of beaten gold. It was built according to the exact design the Lord had shown Moses. The Levites dedicated Numbers 8, 5 through 26. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel and make them ceremonially clean. Do this by sprinkling them with water purification and have them shave their entire body and wash their clothing. Then they will be ceremonially clean. Have them bring a young bull and a grain offering of choice flour moistened with olive oil along with a second young bull for a sin offering. Then assemble the whole community of Israel and present the Levites at the entrance of the tabernacle. When you present the Levites before the Lord, the people of Israel must lay their hands on them. Raising his hands, Aaron must present the Levites to the Lord as a special offering from the people of Israel, thus dedicating them to the Lord's service. Next, the Levites will lay their hands on the heads of the young bulls, present one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering to the Lord, to purify the Levites and make them right with the Lord. Then have the Levites stand in front of Aaron and his sons and raise your hands and present them as a special offering to the Lord. In this way, you will set the Levites apart from the rest of the people of Israel, and the Levites will belong to me. After this, they may go into the tabernacle and do their work, but because you have purified them and presented them as a special offering. Of all the people of Israel, the Levites are reserved for me. I have claimed them for myself in a place of all the firstborn sons of the Israelites. I have taken the Levites as their substitutes. First, all of the firstborn males among the people of Israel are mine, both of people and of animals. I set them apart for myself on the day I struck down all the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. Yes, I have claimed the Levites in place of all the firstborn sons of Israel. And of all the Israelites, I have assigned the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They will serve in the tabernacle on behalf of the Israelites and make sacrifices to purify the people, so no plague will strike them when they approach the sanctuary. So Moses, Aaron, and the whole community of Israel dedicated the Levites carefully, following the Lord's instructions to Moses. The Levites purified themselves from sin and washed their clothes, and Aaron lifted them up and presented them to the Lord as a special offering. He then offered a sacrifice to purify them and make them right with the Lord. After the Levites went into the tabernacle to perform their duties, assisting Aaron and his sons, so they carried out all the commands that the Lord gave Moses concerning the Levites. The Lord also instructed Moses, this is, the rule of the Le this is the rule the Levites must follow. They must begin serving in the tabernacle at the age of 25, and they must ret retire at the age of 50. After retirement, oh, I want to retire at 50. I lost my space. I got so distracted by retirement. After retirement, they may assist their fellow Levites by serving as guards at the tabernacle, but they may not officiate in this service. This is how you must assign the duties to the Levites. Second Passover, Numbers 9, 1 through 14. Two weeks after the tabernacle was finished, Israel celebrated the second Passover. A year after Israel's departure from Egypt, the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. In the first month of that year, he said, Tell the Israelites to celebrate the Passover at the prescribed time. At twilight on the fourteenth day of the first month, be sure to follow all my decrees and regulations concerning this celebration. So Moses told the people to celebrate the Passover in the wilderness of Sinai as twilight fell on the fourteenth day of the month, as they celebrated the festival there, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. But some of the men had been ceremonially defiled by touching a dead body, so they could not celebrate the Passover that day. They came to Moses and Aaron and said, We have become ceremonially unclean by touching a dead body, but why should we be prevented from presenting the Lord's offering at the proper time with the rest of the Israelites? Moses answered, Wait here until I have received instruction for you from the Lord. 
This was the Lord's reply to Moses. Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. If any of the people now or in the future generations are ceremonially unclean at Passover time because of touching a dead body, or if they are on a journey and cannot present at the ceremony, they may still celebrate the Lord's Passover. They must offer the Passover sacrifice one month later at twilight on the 14th day of the second month. They must eat the Passover lamb at that time with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. They must not leave any of the lamb until the morning, and they must not break any of its bones. They must follow all normal regulations concerning the Passover. But those who neglect to celebrate the Passover at the regular time, even though they are ceremonially clean and not away on a trip, will be cut off from the community of Israel. If they fail to present the Lord's offering at the proper time, they will suffer the consequences of their guilt. And if foreigners living among you want to celebrate the Passover to the Lord, they must follow these same decrees and regulations. The same lies, laws apply to both the native-born Israelites and the foreigners living among you. Procedure for Burnt Offering, Leviticus 1, 1 through 17. The Lord called to Moses from the tabernacle and said to him, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you present an animal as an offering to the Lord, you may take it from your herd of cattle or your flock of sheep and goats. If the animal you present as a burnt offering is from the herd, it must be a male with no defects. Bring it to the entrance of the tabernacle so you may be accepted by the Lord. Lay your hands on the animal's head and the Lord will accept its death in your place to purify you, making you right with him. Then slaughter the young bull in the Lord's presence, and Aaron's sons and the priests will present the animal's body by splattering it against all the sides of the altar that stand at the entrance of the tabernacle. Then skin the animal and cut it into pieces. The sons of Aaron, the priest, will build a wood fire on the altar. They will arrange the pieces of the offering, including the head and fat, on the wood burning on the altar. But the internal organs and the legs must first be washed with water. Then the priest will burn the entire sacrifice on the altar as a burnt offering. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If the animal you present as a burnt offering is from the flock, it may be either a sheep or a goat, but it must be a male with no defects. Slaughter the animal on the north side of the altar in the Lord's presence, and Aaron's sons, the priests, will splatter its blood against all sides of the altar. Then cut the animal in pieces, and the priest will arrange the pieces of the offering, including the head and fat, on the wood burning on the altar, but the internal organs and the legs must first be washed with water. Then the priest will burn the entire sacrifice on the altar as a burnt offering. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If you present a bird as a burnt offering to the Lord, choose either a turtle dove or a young pigeon. The priest will take the bird to the altar, wring off its head, and burn it on the altar. But first he must drain its blood against the side of the altar. The priest must also remove the crop and the feathers and throw them in the ashes on the east side of the altar. Then, grasping the bird by its wings, the priest will tear the bird open, but without tearing it apart. Then he will burn it as a burnt offering on the wood burning on the wood burning on the altar. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Procedures for the grain offering. Leviticus 2, 1 through 16. When you present a grain offering as an offering to the Lord, the offering must consist of choice flour. You are to pour olive oil on it, sprinkle it with frankincense, and bring it to Aaron's sons, the priests. The priests will scoop out a handful of the flour moistened with olive moistened with oil, together with all the frankincense, and burn this this represent and burn this representative portion on the altar. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. The rest of the offering The rest of the grain offering will then be given to Aaron and his sons. This offering will be considered a most holy part of the special gifts presented to the Lord. If your offering is grain offering baked in an oven, it must be made of choice flour without any yeast. It may be presented in the form of thin cakes mixed with olive oil or wafer spread with it must be presented in the form of thin cakes mixed with olive oil or wafers spread with olive oil. If your grain offering is cooked on a griddle, it must be made of choice flour mixed with olive oil, but without any yeast. Break it apart. I wonder if it was sourdough or if it was just flat like a cracker. Break it into pieces and pour all, well, they broke it into pieces, so it was probably flat like a cracker. And pour olive oil on it. It is a grain offering. If your grain offering is prepared in a pan, it must be made of choice flour and olive oil. No matter how a grain offering for the Lord has been prepared, bring it to the priest, who will present it to the altar. at the altar. The priest will take a representative portion of the grain offering and burn it on the altar. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. 
The rest of the grain offering will then be given to Aaron and his sons as their food. This offering will be considered a most holy part of the special gifts presented to the Lord. Do not use yeast in preparing any of the grain offerings you present to the Lord, because no yeast or honey may be burned as a special gift presented to the Lord. You may add yeast or honey to an offering of the first crops of your harvest, but you must never these must never be offered on the altar as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Season all your grain offerings with salt to remind you of God's eternal covenant. Never forget to add salt to your grain offerings. If you present a grain offering to the Lord for the first portion of your harvest, bring fresh grains that is coarsely ground and, fi- and roasted on a fire. Put olive oil on this grain offering and sprinkle it with frankincense. The priest will take a representative portion of the grain, moistened with oil, together with all the frankincense, and burn it as a special gift presented to the Lord. Procedures for the peace offering, Leviticus 3, 1 through 17. If you present an animal from the herd as a peace offering to the Lord, it may be a male or a female, but it must have no defects. Lay your hands on the animal's head and slaughter it at the entrance of the tabernacle. Then Aaron's sons, the priest, will splatter its blood against all sides of the altar. The priest must present part of this peace offering as a special gift to the Lord. This includes all the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys, and the fat around them near the loins, and the long lobe of the liver. These must be removed with the kidneys, and Aaron's son will burn them on top of the offering on the wood burning on the altar. It is a special gift, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. If you present an animal from the flock as a peace offering to the Lord, it may be a male or female, but it must have no defects. If you pres- Excuse me. If you present a sheep as your offering, bring it to the Lord. Lay your hand on its head and slaughter it. In front of the tabernacle, Aaron's sons will then splatter the sheep's blood on all sides of the altar. The priest must present this, present the fat of this peace offering as a special gift to the Lord. This includes the fat of the broad tail cut near the backbone, all the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys, and the fat around them near the loins, the long and the long lobe of the liver. This must be removed with the kidneys, and the priest will burn them on the altar. It is a special gift of food presented to the Lord. If you present a goat as your offering, bring it to the Lord. Lay your hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tabernacle. Aaron's priest will then splatter the blo- goat's blood on against all sides of the altar. The priest must present this part of the offering as a special gift to the Lord. This includes all the fat around the internal organs, the two kidneys, and the fat around them near the loins, and the long lobe of the liver. These must be removed with the kidneys, and the priest will burn them on the altar. It is a special gift of food, a pleasing aroma to the Lord. All the fat belongs to the Lord. You must never eat any fat or blood. This is a permanent law for you, and it must be observed from generation to generation wherever you live. All right, there we go. All right, let's do Trim Healthy Mama 100 Days of Inspiration. We are on day 40... Seven. I'm staying on track. I'm not getting the book confused. I shouldn't say that because tomorrow I'll skip a day. A helping hand. There are so many hurting, lonely, rejected, and sad people all around the world, all around us, aren't there? And all they need is a kind and encouraging word. I think of 1 Samuel 23:16, where Jonathan went to David in the wood and strengthened his hand in God. We all need strengthening and encouraging especially in the ways of God. This is how we keep going as pilgrims on this earth. It's not something we should do only when we get the urge. We are exhorted in Hebrews 3.12 to encourage one another daily. That means every day. Of course, you'll first start with the people in your home, your husband and your children, and then reach out to others outside the home. Sometimes you have to get out of your comfortable zone, comfortable zone instead of comfort zone, and go out into the woods, even someplace you would not normally choose to lift up someone's heart and change their life. You can ask God to bring your mind, bring to your mind someone you can encourage today. Give them a call or write them a lovely card. You can text them, but there is something special about a nice card with a handwritten encouragement. Perhaps you feel, perhaps you feel need of lifting up yourself. Let them tell you a secret. The greatest way to forget your own problems is to encourage someone else. As you reach out to bless someone else, your own problems lighten. Nancy. Sing. Isaiah 12, 2 says, Behold, God 
is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. If everything were perfect when Isaiah wrote this hymn, he wouldn't have needed to not be afraid. Instead, he chose the strength of Jehovah. He chose Jehovah's song. What is the melody of your soul? Is it a dirge because of your circumstances? We read in Hosea 15 that when God that when God took Israel, there's a typo. When God took Israel into the wilderness, she shall sing there. Yes, you can sing in your wilderness. Are you in a battle? Is your song one of defeat? If so, it's time to change your song. In the Bible, we read of the singers going before the soldiers into battle, as in 2 Chronicles 20, 22. And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, and when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set, in, set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, and they were smitten. Their songs of praise brought victory over their enemies. Sing away your problems as you sing about God's mighty power. Worship with songs of joy and watch your circumstances change. As Psalm 98 1 encourage us to O oh, oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him victory. Are you in a dry wilderness? Is the well of your spirit all dried up? Numbers 21 17 gives us the answer. Sing. Then Israel sang this song Spring up, O well, sing ye unto it. Serene. Just straightening the cake. Let's say you're at a party and you're the only one and you're only going to have one brownie. The brownies have been cut into pieces, but they are being served in the pan they were baked in. You use the serving utensils to take your piece, but then you realize that the side of the other brownie was attached to it and is not cut straight. You take the knife and make a slice until the rest of the brownie in the dish looks nice and neat. After you enjoy your piece and the slice from the other brownie, you see other people taking seconds. They won't be able to judge you. You cut another piece, but oh no, someone made a huge crooked cut. You better fix that up. Your second helping might be bigger than you, you intended, but at least the dish looks clean and straight. So much for only having one brownie. I know how ridiculous this sounds, but I've been guilty of this before and have seen others act the same. Obsessive compulsive disorder can be found in ways relating to food. It's another one of those little things we can't allow to control us. Okay. For sure, Sarah. Yep. Yep, worship music turns your mood around. I feel the same way about my morning devotion. I can be in a crabby mood. But then I, whew, I sit down to read devotions and it turns my mood around. It does, does it always make my day perfect? No. But it turns my mood around and it and it helps me straighten out my day. So, okay guys, thanks for joining me this morning. Um Today is uh, Wednesday, if I didn't already say that three times. And on Wednesdays, I am only in my Flames coaching group. So if you are part of Flames, I will be live there in a few minutes. I need to go get the dog up and do all that jazz. And then I will be live. This morning, I'm going to make... I got the hiccups. I'm going to make a pulled back E this morning for breakfast. So if you are not part of my coaching group... Sorry, you'll miss it. You'll have to join my coaching group. It's a good reason, right? All right. I love you all. Thanks for joining me this morning. And I will be back tomorrow with more joyful daily devotions. Listen, stay on plan today. You don't need to go off plan on Wednesday. It's literally the on planniest day of the week. The on planniest day of the week. You don't have to go off plan. You can find an alternative to going off plan today. And get up and get your body moving. Go for a walk today. If you were planning to sit and watch breakfast, you were planning to watch me cook in the kitchen, and you were like, oh, I'm not going to see her because I can't watch her cook breakfast because she's in the coaching group only. Take that time and go, go for a walk. I know it's negative two. It's negative two here in Maine. But you won't die. Put a coat on. Go for a walk. All right. I love you all. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow.